Now, there's another side, though. It's not all about expected future demand. There's another, th another element of things that operates in much the same way. And that is, think about if what would happen if you had a lower interest rate. And you can think about a lower interest rate or just lower financing costs, whatever. A better, you know, you thought that financing was going to be better. Now, what would be the effect of the lower interest rate on the market, the way we've structured? So if you think about it, in our model, the way we set up the steady state framework, we had our demand for housing, and we had our steady state supply, which is 1 over delta I of R times 1 plus R over R plus delta. That was our steady state. And this is K bar, this is R bar. Well, a lower interest rate would do what? Well, a lower interest rate would imply a higher price for a given rental price. Right? Everybody understand why? That is, if you lower the interest rate, a given flow of rents is going to be worth more because it's going to be discounted less. That has the effect of at any R shifting this curve to the right. Right, so a new steady state would be over here somewhere. R double bar and K double bar. But think about it. So in this new equilibrium, R double bar is less than R bar. K double bar is greater than K bar. I double bar, which you can't read directly off this graph, but we know. If I'm going to sustain a higher capital stock, I got to have higher investment. They're just they're proportional in equilibrium. It has to be greater than I bar. And P double bar, therefore, has to be greater than P bar. That is a lower interest rate, kind of looks like this boom period, too, right? Because a lower interest rate basically raises the price that the sellers get but lowers the monthly cost of living in the house, right? I can afford more house when the interest rate's lower, right? My monthly payment on my mortgage is going to be smaller for a given house value when the interest rate is lower, right? That's exactly what's going on here. So whether it's a rental rate that some guy's charging me or it's the implicit rental rate for somebody who bought the house, a lower interest rate kind of has this same feel. It's a kind of a boom for these kind of assets because it raises the present value holding the interest rate fixed, I mean, sorry, the rental rate fixed, which causes the supply side to build more, which actually pushes down the monthly cost, okay? So that's kind of the equilibrium that one would see. And whether you, and, there, and I think that was also an important part of what was going on. We had not, not just lower long-term rates, we just had more, li more liquid financing in general, greater access to people to borrow money to buy housing and things like that. You know, the federal government had committed to help more people buy houses. And that all works in this same direction. And if people expected that not just to be short-term, but long-term, that would have that same kind of boom effect. So I, I, I think if you really want to understand the housing market in particular, I think the combination of low rents and kind of simpler financing or, or lower cost, at least to the participant financing, maybe high cost to taxpayers, but lower cost to the participant financing is part of the story, not just high anticipated future demand. That people thought, well, the government's subsidizing people to buy houses, they're going to continue to subsidize them in the future. 